back in February of 2011. My wife, her name was Erica. She had been having migraine headaches and that just started doctor's appointment, got blood work, called me and said, you have to come home, I have cancer. Two hour drive back into basically a nightmare. Wave at mommy and say, hi mommy. Hi mommy. Say, we love you. I love you. I'm strong. Yeah. I think because she loved our family so much and she wanted to be with the boys that she wasn't maybe telling me all the struggles she was having in her breathing and ended up getting a pneumonia and passed away from acute respiratory distress syndrome. About a year later, Kitty had called me to speak at the team and training dinner. So we started talking. I remember getting off the phone and I'm like, I'm not ready for anything right now. But that girl's heart is something really special. And maybe when I am ready, she'll be available. <laughs> I thought the biggest compliment I could give my wife is that I wanted to be married again. We got married in April of 2016. We have twin nine-year-old boys, Ben and Jake. They were Sam's from his first marriage. And then we have a two-year-old named Cole. Family is everything to me. I'd rather be with her and our boys than anywhere else. I was at the boys' school and I was getting these calls from the nurse saying, you know, Jake's in gym class and he just can't, he's not breathing very well. They checked his lungs, they looked at his ears, and they said he has an ear infection. So they gave him medicine, and a week later, he just was kind of wheezing, wasn't getting better. Something in my head was like, something's not right. It's that intuition that I think you get when you're really dialed into your family. Some nights he would get really scared and he'd start crying. I'm like, what's wrong? He's like, do you think I'm going to get cancer like mommy did? Boldly say, no, you have no more chance than anyone else, which he doesn't. Wrong. You know, nobody's immune to this. The doctor looked at the x-ray and said, there's a very large tumor and we think your son has lymphoma. And I, just, I mean, this cannot be, this cannot be happening. Trying to be the strong man, big dad, you know, and inside, I'm scared to death. <laughs> Our perceptions of these cures are that they're instantaneous and they come overnight. And it's not the case but it would be nice to see some changes to them where they're not so side effect causing and debilitating long term. The Leukemia and Lymphoma Society to me means hope, potentially a cure for cancer, cure for blood cancers. The Leukemia and Lymphoma Society for me has been a place of rest and reassurance. When we first got involved, I would talk to my twin sons, Ben and Jake, about why we were doing it and that it was really so no other little boys or little girls had to lose a mom or dad. What are you guys doing? Raising money for blood cancer. So what what are you putting in there right now? All of our money. All of your money that you have? Yep, yep. Seeing their enthusiasm for yeah. that, wow. that was enough for me to know that it was good. But then seeing the results that they have, it gives me rest as someone who lost my wife and someone who has a son with us now. That there's hope on the horizon for all of us and that maybe someone else won't have to deal with this. Hey, this is Jake. I'm getting out of the hospital today. Thank you for all your prayers.